Good afternoon. Okay, the driving factor of coastal evolution. So, uh, just a bit of definition and context. The coast could be, is the interface between ocean and lands, and in consequence, the coast is under the influence of marine processes, continental processes, and human communities. The coast evolved at different nest time, from geological time scale, historical time scale, even time scale, a few hours or few days, to physical process. Okay, je vais pas faire trop fort. Uh, coastal mobility, in fact, is a response to the forcing factor. If at least a marine or a continental variable evolve, the coast tends to adapt to this new condition. So, characterization of the pluridecadal coastal mobility is relatively easy, but identifying the causes of this mobility is not trivial. The present question is what is and will be the impact of climate sea level change, climatic sea level rise on the coast. Climate change does not only affect sea level, but also parameters like air and sea temperatures, atmospheric and oceanic circulation, and all these parameters affect the ocean, as well as land and society, and thus the coast. So, impact of uh, coastal of uh, climate change to coastal change can be reduced to a simple mechanistic projection of sea level landward. The question is why it is impossible to directly assign a new coastline to a given variation of sea level. It's not so simple because we have five main family of forcing factors. Uh, the first one is climate, okay. Second one is external geodynamic process, like this. Internal geodynamic processes, biological processes, and anthropogenic action and impact. In fact, the cost, the cost, the forcing factor on related parameters constitutes the, the, the coastal system. We have numerous interaction and feedback between factor and attribution of causes of coastal change to one or another factor is complex and difficult. About the climate, we have saw this morning some information. We have evolution of climatic parameters which are partially highly variable, like sea level, temperature, salinity, and acidity of the ocean. Other climatic parameters and processes acting on the coastal evolution are dominant winds, with trade wind, for example, but also storm and cyclones, intensity and frequency. Even if for the case of cyclones, there is some uncertainties about the effect of climate change on, this, on the cyclogenesis. And we have also atmospheric pressure. Climate change can potentially modify wind climate, trade wind, storm and cyclone, inducing wave climate change, wave height, orientation, frequency, which can modify the wave energy during normal and extreme event at coast, the cross-shore currents, the longshore drift current. All this can modify the coastal behavior from erosion to stability or to accretion, and the level of coastal erosion and flooding hazards at which each coastal segment ex is exposed. So the wave climate change has an impact on coastline position. About external geodynamic processes, the climate change affects also precipitation rainfall with pattern, frequency, and intensity on land, which indirectly modify at the watershed scale runoff and superficial erosion of soil, triggering trigger uh, landslides with impact on frequency and intensity of landslide, and this induces indirectly a modification to the supply of sediment to the river. But water and this sediment discharge of river of outlets are also changed. So there is some modification of the sediment supply at the coast, and thus the coastal sedimentary widget, which can lead to a modification of the coastal behavior, accretion, stability, or erosion. So there is likely indirect incidence of rainfall change on the coastline position. About internal, internal geodynamic processes, at coast, the relative sea level is composed by the regional climatic sea level and vertical movement of ground. The vertical movement can counteract, compensate, or amplify the climatic sea level rise, giving the local relative sea level. And the vertical movement has various origins, like tectonic, isostatic, thermic, and linked to the cooling of volcanoes. 
So vertical movements are not necessarily homogeneous at the regional scale or even at the island scale. Vertical movement of each site must be characterized, sorry, studying the geological and geomorphological context, neotectonic and seismicity, but also with monitoring the ground movement using GPS, INSA, and so on. So vertical ground movement have consequences for the coastline position and coastal hazards, erosion and flooding. About biological factor, uh, I will give you some example of the reef, for example, for the reef action. Reef play a crucial role in the evolution of tropical island as a biological resource, a sediment supplier, and a protective barrier against swell and wave during storm and cyclone. Climatic parameters like sea level, ocean temperature, salinity and acidity are crucial for coral life. So the reef have been able to accommodate the sea level change during the quaternary as demonstrated by numerous researchers. But the remaining question is what will be the capacity of coral reef to accommodate in the context of a higher rate of sea level rise as predicted by the, in the future decades? The climate change induces also an increase of sea surface temperature and acidity of ocean. But reefs are very sensitive to these parameters Exceeding a threshold for one or more of these parameters can lead to uh, coral beaching, for example, and decrease their cap adaptation capacity to accommodate to the sea level rise. What will be the impact on the reef, barrier and fragging reef, of SST, salinity and acidity change? What will be the impact of reef evolution on the coastline mobility and coastal hazards? Another example of biological factors, mangrove. The mangroves in tropical areas have an important role in the coastal evolution. They have a role in the sedimentation rate and protection against erosion and wave during extreme events, storm, cyclone, or tsunami even. Mangroves are influenced by rise of sea level, CO2, air and water temperature, precipitation with pattern frequency and intensity. All these parameters influence the mangrove evolution and what will be the impact of the evolution of mangrove in the future and impact of this evolution on, on the mobility of the coastline. But uh, we have also in more temperate uh, seas some impact of biologic processes. In fact, biologic productive, productivity of bentos, bivalve, gastropod, etc., can be affected by climate change with incidence on the production of bioclasts. This modification of bioclast production can modify the sedimentary budget of bioclastic sandy beach and share rate. And this uh, will induce modification of the beach resilience to erosion and in consequence to coastline change. Now about the anthropogenic aspect. We can distinguish two different types of anthropogenic uh, action. We have direct action on the coast and indirect action which don't affect, didn't affect the coastal system but have an impact on it. Direct and direct action have impact on the coastal system. These impacts are wanted or not, sometimes at short time, sometimes at a longer time scale. About direct anthropogenic action, we can distinguish, for example, coastal defense works against erosion or submersion, with hard engineering like breakwater, dike, grown, riprap, levee, soft with raw vegetation like this, or intermediate with the beach nourishment, which is a strategy advance the line. Other examples are coastal facilities with arbor, wharf, embankment for road, for example, yeah, for highways in Great Britain, promenade, seaside urban facility, and so. Generally, the main objective of direct action is towards the line, so there is a direct incidence on the coastal evolution and mobility. About in indirect anthropogenic action, uh, we can say that there are very various. The feedbacks effect on coastal zones were generally not wanted or even imaging. And, for example, at the watershed scale, it can be hydraulic works within the river, with diming, for example, which trap some sediments in the river, extracting sand and gravel in the river, change in the land use and land cover, and you see some modification of erosion processes, like deforestation, reforestation, crop development, urbanization, but also open cast mining or modification. All this give a modification of sedimentary flux in the river outlet, modifying the coast sedimentary budget. And so there is some potential influence on the coastline position and coastline behavior. 
Other examples uh, are given here for offshore with dredging of marine sand and gravel, decreasing the shore face sedimentary stock used during the rock river stage of sandy coastline. And for example, offshore action with pumping water or petrol and gas like this. In, um, for example, the Gulf of Mexico, you have here the location of uh, each uh, platform. You see, it's huge. The effect of anthropogenic action can be summarized as follows. We have modification of coastal sedimentary dynamics and flux, degradation of the functioning of the coastal systems, and all these change lead to frequently to a loss of coastal resilience to the extreme event, a modification of coastal hazard and coastline change. So, some concluding remark on forcing factor. The number of interacting factors playing a role on the coastal dynamic and coastline mobility is largely enough to explain why the coastal change is highly variable and, will, and, this, and why this will remain. So, moreover, the forcing factor and parameters act on coast with highly variable characteristics. The coastal variability. Uh, about the geomorphological and geological context, we can distinguish two main types of coast, to be short, accumulating coast and ablating coast. About um, accumulating coast, this is, for example, beach, marshes, estuaries, deltas, reefs, and so. The, BF, the behavior of coastal strip can be very variable from erosion, stability, accretion, according to season, year, or decade. There is a reversibility for this type of coast of uh, coastline behavior with poss possibility of a recovery phase after erosional event, for example. There is a resilience of this system. But these systems are generally sensitive to cross shore and drift current, wave storm surge also, and to evolution of the sedimentary budget. Some here, some picture of uh, different type of accumulating coast with here, for example, La Dune du Pilar with erosion at the two of the dunes, but there is a huge stock of sun, so there is a resilience capacity of this, this uh, segment of coast. Here we have a flat sandy bay uh, in Sri Lanka with a flat interlands, it's a very different context. Here a Mediterranean flat in the Bassin d'Arcachon with uh, urbanization back. And here you have an urbanized sand spit in UK. Other example of this type of coast, we have a sandy beach with beach rock and a coral pine pinnacle, beach with a mountainous interland and estuary, estuary in New Caledonia, and a sandy beach which is here, uh, um, a dune is here in erosion in Portugal. You can see that assets are a little uh, exposed to erosion. About ablating coast, this is mainly rocky coast and cleft. Uh, we can note the irreversibility of coastline retreat in case of retreat, and the importance of lithology, fracturation, and weathering, humidity, and frost in the evolution of rocky coasts. These coasts generally are very sensible to wave action and sea level. Example of rocky coast, uh, La Côte Basque here with uh, hard rocks uh, highly fractured. Hard rocks uh, with the landslide here on the coast. Calque cliff, heterogeneous soft rock with karstic uh, future and uh, sometimes fractured. And uh, high, uh, high instabilities in the cliff and engineering work here in uh, La Côte Basque Biarritz. Uh, Biarritz. Biarritz. Sorry. Okay. About geology and geomorphology. So, same forcing factors apply to different geomorphological and geological contexts can have various and different, different effects. Each, coast, each coastal type has its own resilience and adaptive capacity to evolution of forcing factors like sea level change. And so, for evaluating the impact of climate change on coast, it is necessary to realize the typology of the coast, taking into account the local geomorphological and geological context. So, the analysis of past evolution of each type of coast to a changing sea level is the key for understanding the future behavior of the coast. I will try to very quickly, shortly, uh, show some examples of uh, a systemic approach of of some islands from the Pacific. You have here typically uh, a simplified 
same of process affecting the shoreline in a Polynesian atoll. With uh, here the ocean, okay, the waves. You have here the sea level rise or sea level change, somebody here. The sea surface temperature and acidity. You have the outer rift, the rift flat, water coming in the lagoon and getting out. You have motu, you have uh, sometimes some sediment dredging, protective shoreline structure, and so on. If you put uh, this parameter on a graph, you obtain, for example, here are the climate dependent parameters or factors. Here are the external geodynamic factors, the biological factors, the internal, uh, internal geodynamic uh, factors, and uh, here the anthropogenic factors. All these are leading to a coastline evolution, coastline mobility, and coastline change. Other example of uh, high island New Caledonian, for example. You have uh, some parameters which are the same, but we have more, um, you have in an interland which is more mountainous with erosion, sedimentary supply from watershed, but we have also some mine, open cast mining with mining waste. You have some uh, sand extraction in the downward part of the river. And you have this system with a barrier reef here. Again, if you plot this on a graph, you have these climate dependent factors, external geodynamic factors, which are not a little bit more complex than, than previously. Biological factors with a barrier and reef, for example, adaptation, but also mangrove adaptation. Internal geodynamic is the same with vertical movement from tectonics, isostatic, and so. And we have also uh, anthropogenic factors, which are more numerous with land use change, mining activities, for example, sand and gravel extraction in river, and sea defense and dikes. All these parameters can lead to a coastal change. Uh, in New Caledonia, for example, we have analyzed 20, 12 previous terrain uh, coastal sites with analysis of the coastline evolution during the five, five last decade. Uh, what we note is that the evolution of coastline are highly variable from high rate to erosion to high rate of accretion. And we have analyzed all the forcing factors identified previously and parameters, marine, continental, and human. You can see, for example, that there is a progradation here for 230 meters, but you have erosion of uh, more than uh, 100 meters during the five uh, last two decades, and so it's highly variable. We have tried to, to determine what was the factor control of uh, this uh, coastal evolution, and there, uh, to be very brief, results show that the coastal evolution of the last five decades is highly related to the percentage of bare soils generated by open cast nickel mining on watershed. All the red stuff here are the bare soil generated by nickel mining. You have, for example, here production of uh, nickel in one uh, watershed. And uh, in fact, this uh, bare soil are eroded during, uh, during rain. Our uh, sediments are dropped in the river and going down very quickly for thin lateritic sediment down to the river and um, are now at the outlet and modify, uh, consequently, the coastal sediment budget. If you plot, for example, the coastal uh, movement during the five last decades, again, uh, the percent percentage of total bare soil, you see that there is a good correlation uh, showing us that uh, this is for the New Caledonia and for the segment on which we have worked, the, the relation is relatively uh, high between uh, erosion of bare soil uh, due to mining and the uh, coastal evolution. Conclusion, sea level is only one of the forcing factors of coastal evolution. Interaction and feedback between processes are numerous. So studies about impact of climate change on coastal area must take into account global, regional and local parameters each one influencing the coastal behavior. Uh, so it is a multi-scale approach. This is a necessity. Second 
One is the multi-temporal approach. The present and future evolution is linked to the past history and the evolution trend with a residual effect of some changes in the parameter and processes affecting the cost. And uh, multidisciplinary work are a necessity in order to take into account the complexity of determining the impact of climate change on coastal system. And uh, understanding what could be the future of coast in a changing climate implies to take into account all processes acting on their evolution. A systemic analysis of the problem seems to be a possible approach. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.